Bwana Yesu asifiwe. For the sake of the visitors, my name is Washu Mwangi. I am born again this morning and I am delighted and humbled at the same time that I am the one who is bringing the word of God this morning and I bless God that he picked me up. Bwana asifiwe. When nobody would love me, when nobody would listen to me, when nobody thought that I, I am anything or I had a name, the Lord picked me up and I'm eternally grateful to my Savior. Amen. My husband and my daughter are in the house. Yes, Mwangi is seated over there. I bless God for him. And so I'm delighted to be studying before you this morning. But this stubborn preacher has no message of her own. And I pray that the Lord is going to minister to us this morning. Before I share what the Lord has placed in my heart, I've been hearing Psalms 126 media. I know I hadn't told you that, but can we put it on quickly? Psalm 126. It is usually a very short psalm. But I want us to read this together. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, that is back to Jerusalem, we were like those who dreamed. It seemed so unreal. Let's go to verse 2. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with joy of shouting. I thought we are reading together. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Verse 3. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our captivity, O Lord, as the stream beds in the south are restored by torrents of rain. Verse 5. The, they who sow in tears shall reap with a joyful singing. I want to stop there. Praise be to God. This is a psalm that was written by the children of Israel once they came back from captivity. And they're in Jerusalem. And they just felt like they were dreaming. Seventy years had elapsed. Actually, 70, yeah, 70 years had elapsed. And they felt coming back to the place of worship, coming back to their promised Lord, it felt so unreal. So it felt like they were dreaming. And this morning, because we are all Kenyans, we are looking at our nation. We are looking at our economy. We are looking at the layoffs. We are looking at how business are shutting down day and night. And we are wondering what shall become of us. I came to tell you this morning that this year, though it may be looking so hard and tough, believe us, God is going to do things for us that are going to make it look so unreal. We're going to be filled with so much joy and laughter in our mouths and in our tongues that we will wonder whether we are still in Kenya. Praise be to God. And I pray that you can pick Psalm 126 and run with it. I have been running with this psalm since the month of July. And as I sat there, as I worshipped, it came on ringing in my mind that it is going to look so unreal for the things that God is doing for the believers in this nation. The things that God is going to do for your business. The things that God is going to do in your family. The things that God is going to do in this sanctuary. They will be looking so unreal. Praise be to God. Why? Because because God reigns in power, he reigns in majesty, he just needs to arise and speak and things will start falling in place. Praise be to God. God doesn't need to do anything, he just needs to speak. God just needs to speak brethren and your issue becomes resolved. Hallelujah. Elisha stood up and said, a time like this, tomorrow, the economy will be different. 
and by that word au shekara yanta tomorrow things were different in samaria i pray that you can start speaking like that into your arrive that things may be looking dark and darker but there is a jehovah god who reigns in power and majesty and when he speaks and it can never be reversed when he says i will do it it starts done to the glory and honor of his name hallelujah Second Kings chapter 7 verse 3 to 4. And I want us to read together. As you read I pray that faith will start growing in your spirit. Now four men who were repas were at the entrance of the city gate and they said to one another. Now look for a neighbor. This service we are going to be doing a lot of talking because the topic of my message is conversation so we are going to be doing a lot of conversation so look for a neighbor who seems to be having faith if your neighbor doesn't look like he has faith or he has faith you have permission to move so let's continue now these are four lepers and they are having a conversation with each other and the first question they are asking each other i don't know whether it was number 1 2 3 4 is asking but the question the, the, the bible says and they said in plural they said to one so what was the question why should we sit now please ask your neighbor now i can see a sister somewhere who has no neighbor So I don't know whom she is conversing with. Let's go on verse 4. If now tell your neighbors we read if we stay we will enter the if we say we will enter the city then the famine is in the city and we will die and if we sit we will also so now come let us go over to the camp of the Armenians if they let us live we will. if they kill us after all everybody dies why i have entitled my message conversation and you can give it any other topic what is a conversation a conversation is a talk mostly informal just like we are doing you had not planned to talk to your neighbor isn't it so it is an informal conversation between two or more people in which new ideas thoughts feelings information is exchanged questions are asked and answers are given so tumeko tukiuliza na maswali sahi so conversations bring out our intent and it also projects our expectation so every time you're having a conversation with somebody or with god or with yourself i don't know whether you have ever seen this comment like that says if you see me talking to myself then you know i'm having a what a board meeting when i see you were so if you find washo talking to herself just know she is having a board meeting with washo and company when i see you so when you start a conversation you are bringing out your intentions and you also expecting a what an answer our conversations oh i pray that this will sink in our spirit our conversations are not just words but they are sounds tell your neighbor our conversations are not just words but they are sounds when as if we were we release that sound into our present and to the future for our own lives and for the life of the loved ones one as if we were our conversations are proclamations we said vibrations as we speak because a sound sets vibrations one as if we were into the atmosphere so that is exactly what we do when we are talking to each other we are setting vibrations The Lord has been teaching me about prayer that my prayers are sounds hallelujah 
So when I am praying, I am releasing sounds in the atmosphere. And whatever needs to receive my sound, when it receives that sound, then something has to change. So I want you to understand from today that your words are not just words. God tells Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 14 that I have put a, I have put my word in your mouth as fire. As what? So you just know then that your words are not just words. They can burn. They can create they can turn the tide aloud. So every conversation that Jesus Christ held anywhere brought transformation. So should our conversations. One of the greatest conversations that I love was the, the conversation that Jesus held with the Samaritan woman. A divorcee Six times. How many times? Aliambiwa tayari ure ukonae kwa nyumba sahi. Sio wako. But in that conversation, we do not see Jesus condemning the Samaritan woman. Remember number one, that it was wrong for the woman to be having the conversation with Jesus. She was Samaritan, Jesus Christ was a Jew, and she was a harot. But you go read the conversation. There is nowhere God condemns this woman. And that brought transformation. And she stood there thinking, I have never felt such kind of a love. I have never felt such kind of an affirmation. I'm a Samaritan. I am a Harold. But here, the king of glory had the time to listen to me. And she learned because her heart and her mind had been transformed. And she went to the villagers saying, come see a man. That is what our conversation should produce. That our conversations should be leading people to this cross. And as they leave our presence, they should be go saying, come see a man. I don't know when people leave your presence, how they feel, what they go saying about what has just transpired. Our conversations are inputs. So as you do inputs, what do you expect? An output. If your conversations are bitter, angry, negative, expect withdrawals. Expect silent treatment. Minimum interactions. But if your conversations are full of faith, if they stir up something in people, then expect a lot of people and a lot of interactions. Amen. What we read, please return the, 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 the reading verses. Our reading verse in the book of Kings chapter 7, 2 Kings of ch chapter 7, starts way back in chapter 6 of the same book. This is when King Ben-Hadad of Syria captured and besieged Samaria. A great famine came up on the city of Samaria that was so, so bad that one kg of daf dung, pupu ya dutura, yes, what do you call them? Doves. It was costing 194 Kenya shillings. So one kg of daf dung was more expensive than two kgs of unga in our present situation. They started eating their children. They started eating things that were considered unclean. Actually, they were selling the heads of donkeys. Donkeys were considered unclean. And when they started eating their children, the king heard about it. And he was so in his spirit, and he said, he was so so that he decided, 
if this continues, because I cannot get to where God is, I will go get his prophet and behead him. Actually, he was sacred and started walking towards, leaning against the wall like this because he was in pain. Children became food. And you're looking at me and you're thinking, you mean it can be that bad? I want you to look around in the nation of Kenya right now. Aren't we feeling like we are the siege? When the tax bill was released, the finance bill, what were your reactions? For the first time in our history, they are taxing insurance. For the first time in our history, they are forcing the people who are employed to give money that we do not know how we will ever recover. And it is mandatory. And for the first time in our history, they have introduced that 3% tax and they have also decided it goes back to the month of July. So they are recovering it in Arias. That is Kenya for us. So today, if you didn't know, go calculate 1.5% of your gross, not basic. And also for the first time, they are taxing gross. Sangura, for the first time, they are taxing gross. We have never been taxed gross. They always tax our basic income. But for the first time in the history of Kenya, they are taxing our gross income. Don't you think we are feeling like we are in Samaria? For the first time, many families in Kenya are just having one meal a day. One. And I know our hearts are feeling heavy. We are wondering how our children are going to the university, especially the team that is going in this September. But I came to tell you something, hallelujah, that there is a God seated in heaven who has forever remained constant and who rules in every single season of our lives. So we could be going through what we are going through, but God is watching and he is telling us, Fear not Kenyans, fear not members at Shiro, for I am going to hold you with my right righteous hand. Tell your neighbor, he is holding us with his right righteous hand. When Elisha heard that the king is coming for his head, he arose, hallelujah. And I pray that in this nation, God is going to raise authentic prophets who can arise and speak right through into our economy. And Elisha rose and said, tomorrow, a time like this, tell your neighbor, tomorrow, a time like this. Tell your neighbor, there is going to be a shift of seasons. There is going to be a shift for season. Don't ask me how. But all I know and I know in my Noah that God is shifting seasons in this nation. I have no idea how. I'm sure Gehazi and the people that were around Elisha did not know how. I am sure 100% Elisha also did not know how the season was going to shift. But he arose and said, tomorrow things are going to be different. I came to announce on this altar that there is going to be a shift of seasons for believers. The lepers were outside the gate for the obvious reasons that they were unclean. Why? Because leprosy was a defying disease. 
the city was shut because of the enemies. But even if there were no enemies, the four lepers would still have remained outside the city. But we do not see any moment where they are complaining. One ask if you will. I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor from this moment on we are not going to be complaining. Instead of complaining, I want you to start prophesying to your situation. I want you to start speaking the language of God and the language of faith in that situation. The enemy would want to see us running and complaining. But I came to remind us this morning that instead of complaining, we are turning around and we'll start speaking to that situation. Hallelujah. In our text there, they are talking to each other, the four lepers. And they said to one another, why do we sit here until we die? What a profound conversation. What a profound question. And I want us to start looking at the four lepers with a different lens. They were lepers. They were outside. And that is where the conversation began. If they were inside this conversation would not have taken place. But because they were outside, condemned, waiting to die, I want you to see rappers. Some of them did not have fingers. Some did not have toes. Others did not have their noses, their ears. What leprosy does, you don't feel pain. But it is um, a depressing disease. So you just usually you see your your organs just falling off. And sometimes, many times, they don't feel pain. So I want you to imagine some do not have fingers. Their eyes were halfway. But these are the people who are having a conversation. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you could be rappers. But we are going to have a conversation. We are going to have a conversation. I want you to start looking at your situation and thank God. Your exceptional challenge separates you from the crowd so that you can have a different conversation. Hallelujah. These lepers, because of their exceptional charge, they were outside the city. And that is why they started the conversation. And this conversation became the redemption of the whole city because they were rapers. So I want you to understand that your problems could be the solution for your entire family. Your problems could be the solutions for the entire nation. So I want you to start asking yourselves questions in that situation that you find yourself in. This conversation did not, they did not condemn each other. It was a discussion of options. What other options do we have to this problem? We know we have been condemned here to die, but they started wondering, do we need to sit here and die? And that is when they thought, if we go back to the city, we will still die because there is famine. But, tell your neighbor, but. If we go to the enemy's camp, there is a chance they might have mercy upon us and give us food and we will live. Tell your neighbor, but. I came to tell somebody today, there is a but in your story. There is a bat in your charge. And the beauty thing about our bat is there is a strong, righteous tower where we run to and we are so sure we will be safe. They were running to the Assyrians. They were not sure. But we are sure 
That if we run to the Lord Jesus Christ, there is safety. By just sitting where they were, death was assured. However, the talk they were having between them opened their minds to possibilities. Friends, I pray that we can start having conversations in our charities. Our charities may be so exceptional, but once we start talking about them, there will be options. Hallelujah. If we started talking, if we were talking authentically as believers, three quarters of the problems we are having today, we, they would be solved. Because the question we would be asking ourselves, do we have options? And to you who is listening to me, and you have never met the Savior, why do you want to sit there and die? There is a but. You may have been coming to this church for many, many, many months. One year since we began this place. And you come in here every Sunday and you sit there. Pastor Mwashigan did in the first service told us that your time could be only 22 years and you are gone. And he gave an example of Pastor, Miris, Pastor Beatrice seated here. Pastor Beatrice is in her 50s. And some of the young people are looking and saying, eh, we were mezeka. And he said, Pastor Beatrice's time could be a hundred years. So she's just a teenager this morning. But if your time is 22 years, and you are 20 years, you are very, very old. And because we do not know our timings, I want to invite you who is listening to me. Don't just sit there. There is eternity. There is salvation. That is why we stand the way we stand. Smiling at our challenges, knowing we are lepers, but there is a cross that we can learn to. One as if we were. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the right and my burdens lulled away. So every person here listening to me, and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, do not sit there. Come to him and you will be saved. Hallelujah. Remember the four rappers were condemned. And the people in the city, be sure they were not thinking about them. They were thinking about how they were going to survive. One as if he were, there must be an answer to what I am going through. And the answer lies in what I am saying about it from the abundance of my heart. The Bible says, from the abundance of my heart, the mouth... Their conversation was a solution, as I said before, not only to them, but to the whole city. When they decided to arose and dragged their feet step by step, slowly and painfully, God became part of the conspiracy. They were dragging themselves. I imagine they were holding each other like this. Remember, they had not eaten for a while. They are sick. They are condemned by their fellow Samaritans. And I imagine the four of them locking their hands and dragging their feet like this. And when Jesus saw the faith in the four rappers, he became part of the conspiracy. And the Bible says those rappers feet they started sounding like chariots. Hey, they started sounding like the horse's feet, the four reparous men's feet. When God sees our faith, friends, he becomes part of our conspiracy. 
He amplifies that little faith in you. He causes your feet to sound like chariots. He causes your feet to sound like horses. Oh, the Kayara Babozeta. So I pray that you will arise and stop looking at how thin boy you are. Stop looking at how faithless you sound and tell the Lord, become part of my conspiracy. Praise be to God. In the season we are in, I want to imagine, as I said, we are feeling the way they were feeling. But the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is in common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted, or to go whatever it is beyond what you are able. But will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape. The way of escape for the four lepers was their feet. The Lord amplified it and they started sounding like chariots. And you can imagine what the Syrians were hearing. Go, go, go. And they ran. That was the way of escape for the four lepers. This morning I came to tell somebody there is a way of escape for your charity. Oh, God will not leave us to suffer. God will not leave us without help. I can assure you that he is making a way for us this morning. But what kind of conversation should we hold as I come or bring this to conclusion? I said our conversations are sounds that cause vibrations. Hold conversations with your tribe. And when I say your tribe, I don't mean your you people, you are rules. I'm not talking a vicinity. I am talking about a people who understands who you are, are people who can feel your vibes. The four rappers had created a tribe of rappers. Remember, they were Samaritan, and Samaritans were a mixed race. So in there, if Samaritan was Kenya, there maybe one of the rappers was a rule. The other one was a half tribe of Somali, Kikuyu, and Ruo. The other one could have been a mixture of Somali, Maasai, and Tugen. And the other one would have been an Arab, Mare, a mixture of Arab and Taita. So those were the four rappers. But they had formed a tribe. A tribe that understood each other's pain. A tribe that understood also each other's shame. That is what I'm talking about. Have conversations with your tribe. Your tribe, they will know you have woods all over. But they will not point at the woods. They will keep on telling you, Wangeshi, I can see them. They are oozing. But I want to tell you, there is an option to our pain. I want to tell you, Wangeshi, there is a Christ who is waiting to clean your woods if you keep moving. Have conversations with you, tribe. Your tribe will not allow you to worry in self-pity. In this conversation with the four rappers, have you seen any of them pointing to the one that did not have fingers? Mm -mm. Actually, they knew they were going to die anyway, but they asked each other, why sit here and die? That is what your tribe does. They know your challenges. They know your shame. They know your pain. They know you do not have a chance. But they will rock your hands. And they will drag you. And give you hope. Until you get where you can be able to get help. 
I pray that we can understand who our tribes men are. I pray that we can look for our tribes men. They will cheer you up even when they can see all your weaknesses. You are secure with your tribes men. You are so secure. They will not go to discuss about what you told them with another person. They cover your shame. They give you remedies for their pain, for your pain. They give you hope even when there seems to be no hope. They point you to the cross of Calvary. So hold conversations with your tribesmen. You need to search for your tribesmen. You need to search for your tribesmen. Praise be to God. When Jesus was called upon to go and see his brothers, he said, no, those are not my brothers. My brothers, my family, my tribesmen are those who are doing the will of God. Those are your tribesmen. Number two, God is always in our conversation. He is daily listening to what we are saying and he affirms our conversation. So we have to be so careful what we are saying as we converse with each other. We need to be careful, friends. The book of Malachi chapter 3, verse chapter 3, 16 to 18, I want you to go and read at home. My time is well spent. Then the, those who feared the Lord talked often one to another, and the Lord listened and heard. The Lord did what? Listen. Those who feared the Lord, the company, that tribe, your tribe, oftenly talks. Hallelujah. So I want you to know as you talk with your tribes, men, Jehovah God is part of your conversation. He listens and hears. And when he hears, mm, he records. He records. And when he records, there is a moment of remembrance. There is a what? A moment of remembrance. So let's be careful the kind of conversations that we are holding with each other. He hears, listens, hears, and records. I'm not telling you not to talk about politics. I am not telling you not to talk about the economy. But even in that political conversation, what are you saying? Is God receiving glory? Is somebody getting edified? Is somebody getting encouraged? Or is somebody getting condemned? Are we careless as we talk about politics? Are we careless as we talk about our nation? I keep on telling people, the people who are manufacturing nations, closed shop, Wrong before any of us was born. So as you speak concerning Kenya, please know we have no other nation. God affirms our conversations. So every time you wake up and you start condemning Kenya, what happens to the nation of Kenya? It becomes condemned. When you arise up every morning and all you're doing is cursing your children, they become a cast. When you rise up in the morning and you are a believer, and all you are saying is, He kanisa ya he inchi. All you do is condemn the preachers. Wewe ni wa inchi gani na kanisa yenu ni gani. Kama iko Nigeria, jana tuliambio hivyo na the one who was training us. Kama iko Nigeria, please hama Kenya wede wapi? She, she, she was talking on a different thing and she said, if the only thing you know how to quote is the preachers in Nigeria, you have no business dealing with Bishop Jimmy Kemani, Hama, Wenda, Nigeria. 
She was teaching us on how to relate with the shepherd of the house. So if the only thing you speak about is the evil of the church in Kenya, we are making a very special request. Hama Kanisa ya Kenya. Bwana asifiwe. We are Kenyans and Kenya is our business. And so we need to arise. Know that God is part of our proclamations concerning the nation. He is listening. He is hearing. He is recording. What did God record about Kenya from your mouth this morning? What did God record concerning the body of Jesus in Kenya as you are discussing it? He affirms our conversations. He writes them down so that tomorrow when the books of remembrance are opened, he will say what was said concerning the nation. Be careful. Our conversations should be faith building to each other. Our conversations should create hope to each other, create possibilities. They should be edifying conversations. The four rappers knew they were sick, but they didn't keep on repeating how sick they were. They actually just said, we are not dying. We will not die. We know we are condemned. We know how to na mapua na maskio wenginewe tu nyuere nusu imeeda. But yet I refuse to sit here and die. And they arose. And the Lord delivered a whole nation. What are your conversations looking like in this season? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, just write it down. But media, give me Job 19, verse 1 and 2. I want you to write Hebrews 10, 24. I want you to, read, to write Proverbs 27, 17. Hebrews telling us, stir up one another into good works. Now, if your conversations are not stirring me into good works, Keep off. If your words are not sharpening me, keep off. Because that is what our conversations should do. Media, give me Job 19, verse 1 and 2. This is one of my best chapters in the book of Job. Then Job answered and said, Let's go. How long will you torment and exasperate me? And crush me with words. Now imagine, Job is talking to the people who had gone to comfort him. Do those words look like Job was feeling comforted? Does he sound a very comforted man? Remember, this is a man who had lost everything except, except a nagging wife. Everything had gone. But God, I'm watching the nagging wife. Where? Rudisha. And Job is asking his friends, how long will you torment and exasperate me and crush me with your words? Ask your neighbor. Do your words crush or edify? Do your words torment or encourage? Do your word exasperate or rift? Do they stir anybody up or this is what they do? Let's check our conversations. And finally, our conversations can create death or they can banish us from the presence of God. And I don't want to read, but I want you to write down Genesis chapter 3, 1 to 7, and Numbers 12, 1 to 12. Genesis, we are having a conversation. The Bible is full of conversations. But here we are having a conversation with Eve and the devil. I don't want to call him the serpent. I want to call him as he is. 
the devil. If that conversation never took place, we would not be talking about the challenges we are facing this morning. Because Eve is entertaining the devil. And after she has entertained the devil, what happened? Sin entered the world and they are kicked out of Eden. Friends, let's be careful who we are entertaining in our conversations. They could be your brothers and your sisters because in Numbers 12, we see a brother and a sister talking. Biological brothers, Aaron and Miriam, and they are discussing their brother. And they are wondering, Washo kwa hibo mayaka mau, kwa niniyetu anasikiaga mungu. These were brothers and sisters. And sin entered in the camp. So let's be careful who you are entertaining to converse with. It can lead to death. It can lead to sin in the house of God. We are one big family, Shiro. We are excited. We are one year old. And I pray that as we get into the next level of growth, we'll be careful with our conversations. Isaiah 50 verse 4, I want you to write down. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 6, I want you to write that down. But I want the media to give me Psalm 19 verse 14. Let's read together. Let the words of... We are reading together. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord. Firm, immovable, Lord, and my Redeemer. Keep it there. As I bring this sharing to an end, our conversation are drawn from this. Because it is our meditation and the mouth that we seek, if God first affirms them, hallelujah, then as we speak them, they would be speaking life. Because the, the psalmist says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, number one, and pleasing. So if what I meditate every single day, because that finally becomes my words. If you didn't know, you speak what you have been meditating. I keep on telling people, people who call you names because they are angry, they are not calling you names because they are angry. No. That is what they have been thinking about you all along. They are just getting an opportunity, looking for an opportunity to give themselves an excuse. So if you are the type when you are angry, you say all sorts of things, then please check your meditation. When drunkards are passing through your place and they look at this house in Yokos, now they should be the ones living there and they start calling you on. They are not drunk. No, that is how they have been thinking about you or but if our meditations were acceptable, if our meditations were pleasing to God, then our conversations will be what Isaiah says. We would be speaking from a point of a rounded tongue. And we will be giving hope to the weary. Praise be to God. I want us to stand. Isaiah gets into the temple in Isaiah chapter 6. And when he looks at the glory of God, he sees how sinful he is. And an angel goes to the altar of heaven and picks coals and comes and touches his mouth. And he purges him. So that from that moment on, he can start speaking words that are acceptable and pleasing to God. His ribs were purged. For just a second, I want you to open your mouth and tell the Lord to purge you. Tell the Lord to purge you.
Tell the Lord to circumcise your heart so that your meditation becomes acceptable and pleasing before the Father. Hallelujah. We worship you, King in glory, this afternoon. We want to surrender our meditations to you. We surrender our hearts, our Father, and our God to you. That, Lord, you would circumcise us today. That, Lord, you would purge our ribs. That, Lord, as we meditate, our meditation will be acceptable and pleasing to you, our Father. So that the words of our mouth, Lord, will be words that edify the hearers. We honor you today. And we give you all the praise. Receive glory, Lord, and receive honor. In Jesus' name have we prayed and believed.